Hello friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel, and today we are out in the orchard. We have two, four, six, eight, eight or so uh, fruit trees out here, peaches, pears, and several varieties of apples that need some serious pruning. I have missed the last two seasons pruning and taking care of my orchard. This year we're gonna get that back underneath, under control. I will tell you just starting out, I am no expert on pruning, but I watch all the videos and so uh, we're gonna do our best at it. And I'll take you guys along and show you what I'm clearing out of here. So this here is one of our first. Almost every tree I've purchased um, for my orchard was considered, um, I don't know if they refer to them as, oh, dwarf, that's the right word dwarf trees but this one is easily 11 feet tall at this point so once Todd's gets home he's back at uh, working today off-site so when he gets home I'm gonna have his help kind of taking the head of this tree down a bit um, but there's a lot that I can reach and the main things that I do am seeing right now is I do have at the base um, some sprouts coming off the rootstock that I need to get out. And then we just have a lot of water shoots. That'll be the second thing that I go after. And those are just um, branches that are going straight up to the sky. Um, from Typically they grow from inside of a existing scaffolding branch. I'm going to take those out. Okay, well, hopefully you guys can tell that is a whole lot more opened up and cleared out than it was before I started. It is still so, so tall. So I need, like I said, when Ty gets here, maybe we'll bring the bucket tractor out here and get up there and top this one down. And then the bottom uh, branches out here, probably one, two, three at least, if not four, five. I'll probably cut those up away from the ground, um, leaving maybe four or five, what's known as scaffolding branches, these big branches here. Four or five's all you need, really. So um, get those up away from the ground. But let's come back here now to this Granny Smith apple tree. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh man, is she a mess. Lots and lots of water sprouts, a lot to clean up on this one. So I'm just gonna keep doing this all through the orchard and at least get as much as I can get cleaned up today uh, by myself. And then maybe um, before the beginning of March anyway, I'd like to have this all done. And then we we'll, should stimulate the plants, uh, get good airflow through there. So we deal a little bit less with some of the um, fungus and a typical fungus for us usually affects our apples and it's like rust so get some of this cleaned up anyway and treat my orchard a little better so if you have some orchard management to do on your property right now is the perfect time uh, late winter before the buds really bud out um, so that's what we're trying to get accomplished today Okay, well, I'm just about done. I don't know how much more my thumbs got left in it. I just have this one pair left. And other than that apple tree and the two pears, I was able to get the tops off everything pruned back. So it looks a lot cleaner. It's, I don't know if I've affected, like I said, I'm not an expert pruner at all and you guys I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing on my homestead. So you, maybe you can go and research and uh, 
that's typically what I do, but then I get out here and get carried away. So I've learned that I'll just share with you research about pruning apple trees. Um, there's like a appropriate spot where you're trimming above the bud. Um, and then there's something called a collar prune. So you're not damaging the trunk of the tree. And all that's pretty tricky to do when you're out here and you're looking at everything. Like, is that a bud yet? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just do your best with what you have. And don't, I give myself grace in these moments. I'm not a, I didn't go to school for this. I'm not an expert, but I'm trying my best. So we're going to try to get this pear pruned. And I think that's it. And we'll be back uh, in the spring and see how they do. Um, hopefully I'll be able to take you guys with me this year when we spray them down with some fungicide and try to just do a little bit of extra protection on them. So thanks guys for coming with me out in the orchard, just doing a little pre-growing season management. Good job. Is this one going to be in your way? If so, you can take him off. I kind of like him. I think he's okay. Okay. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one all come down. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of them. I know, but I figured you hate this one mowing around it. And this is the pear tree, right? Yeah. I mean, he can stay if you can get around him, okay, but... Uh, well, let's just take the this one. Yeah. Did you have a good day without me? Yeah, okay. Well, does that work? Mm -hmm. Did you get some seeds started? I did, my celery. Nice. Last tree for today. Not a fruit tree. Not a fruit tree. This is a pine tree that in January, early January, 2024, we went to the cabin and Rachel harvested pine trees thinking, let's go home and plant them. <laughs> so we did. And this one's doing great. It's doing great. Some of them are a lot smaller. This is the biggest pine tree that we have ever, you guys are really crooked, that we have ever transplanted from our cabin. We'll see if it works. Yeah. We're gonna prune them because he's got a couple of the, uh, competing branches. Take off this Man, one, smell it. Yeah, I'll cut this off. So it's probably the only tree on our land that has ever been planted by us in the middle of winter. Yes. <laughs> January 6th we planted it. Definitely not recommended. It was more of an experiment because we were having such an oddly warm winter. Um, so if you're just thinking about planting yourself an orchard or planting um, trees on your property, early spring late and preferably late fall are the best times to do that. So all of our fruit trees we did plant the very first spring we moved here, which was eight years ago. And then uh, we've just been adding every fall and spring around the property. The orchard's doing good. Rachel did a great job pruning them. I got all the bottom ones that were too big for her. We still have the one peach tree that we need pear. a ladder, or pear, pe pear tree, yeah. that we need the ladder to get way up there to prune all of those because they're gone crazy. The one apple tree, and I'm pretty sure we have a video about this. They got blown over in the wind, the one that has the four T posts around it. It seems like it's rooted itself back in, yes. which is awesome. I thought for sure that that tree was a goner. That was two seasons ago now that yeah. got. So don't give up on your orchard, even if you're like us and life gets away with you and you don't have time to manage it. Just get back out there and do your best and uh, it'll reward itself, I think, yeah. this year. I might not have as much fruit this year because we did do such a hard pruning, but the next year, if I keep up on it, it yeah. should pay off. Absolutely.
it's turning out great. Yep. We might add a couple more peach trees this year from our local conservation district because one of them died. Actually, two of them died. Not having good luck with peaches. We are not having good luck. But we're going to try again? We're, maybe one <laughs> more time. You got a couple really good harvests yes. off of that one. Yes. One more time. We'll give it a go. All right. We're not, we don't live in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys on the next video. All right. Bye.